Hey guys, this is Derek Duplessy, host of Purpose Rockstar. It's a podcast where we interview people who found purpose in their career in all kinds of fields. Today's interview is with Gretchen Rubin, author of The Happiness Project, Happier at Home, and a lot of books about happy. You know, I really enjoyed this interview because I got to know the journey of the person behind famous author that we all know. It was really cool, and we got into a little bit about her writing process. I know you'll enjoy this. Welcome to the Purpose Rockstar Podcast, inspiring stories of people who found purpose in their careers five days a week. Unleash your inner rock star and tap into your highest purpose with your host, Derek Duplessy. Welcome to the Purpose Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Duplessy, Executive Director of the Duplessy Foundation. We're helping inner city entrepreneurs to pursue their purpose by training them to run a successful business. This show is an extension of our mission to help you and people all over the world find purpose in their work. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Gretchen Rubin left a prestigious career in law where she clerked for Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor to get writing. She created success with The Happiness Project, a book that tells a story of her year-long quest to bring more happiness in her life. We talk about Gretchen's journey, her writing process, and her upcoming book on habits before and after. I think you'll like it. Enjoy. Purpose rock stars, let's do this. Now I want to get into, I want to try to something, something a little different. Usually, um... We just say, all right, what's going on with you now? But what I want to do today with you, Gretchen, is go through, you know, an average day or week. Um, well, I get up at 6 o'clock so I can work for an hour um, before my family gets up. And so I'll do usually email and social media type stuff for an hour. And um, and all the conventional wisdom is that you should use your morning time to do your very highest priority work. But I realize that until that stuff's cleared out, I can't focus on anything more substantial. So I clear that up. Then I get up, have breakfast, make breakfast for my kids, walk my younger daughter to school. Then I usually, um, I take my laptop with me and I work at the, the, my gym has a little coffee shop. And so I work at that coffee shop for as long as I can stand it. And then when I'm like, oh, I can't work anymore. I'm like, my concentration is right. Then I go to the gym. So going to the gym is like this pleasant um, break from working instead of being like something that I have to drag myself to. Um, so then I go to the gym. Then I come back and I might go to, a, there's a library near my apartment where I really like to work. So I might work there. Or maybe sometimes I have meetings, sometimes I have phone calls or, you know, interviews or things like that. Um, So just depending on the day, I will either be doing original writing or, and then every day I write, I post to my blog. So I do that at some point and have to post it. Um, So my day is kind of uh, a a smorgasbord of writerly work, um, which sometimes is sitting, meeting someone for coffee. Um, that might be part of my work day, or I might have a day where I'm really just sitting down and writing. It's hard for me to write more than like five hours in a day. That would be a really, really, really good day of original writing. That's the hardest kind of work that I do. Wow, wow, wow. And, you know, I'm just going to get into the nitty gritty. Do you write in batches? You say, all right, I'm going to write this 1,000 or 2,000 word post and I'm going to write four of them and that's going to be this week and then next week or do you just have the discipline to write new stuff for that day that day? That is a really good question um, because everybody who does something like that has to figure out what works for them. Um, so I write everyone that day. I don't, I don't uh, unless, unless there's some exceptional reason, I don't post ahead of time. So everything that I do is usually done that day. But one thing that I have found is helpful is like each day, and I don't think my readers are probably aware of this, but for me, each day is kind of a theme. And that helps me come up with new ideas because sometimes like being able to do anything 
your mind just goes blank. But when you know what it is, so Monday I try to have a big idea. Like if I have something that I've been mulling over or I feel like it's a really rich idea, I try to do that on Monday. Tuesday I post a video where I tell a story. On Wednesday I do either a tips list or a quiz or some kind of list. People love tips and lists and quizzes, and so I do this on Wednesday. Thursday, I usually do an interview or I do, like, an image. I have these things called Secrets of Adulthood, so I have these kind of cool images that I'll post. And then Friday, because my next book, which I'm so obsessed with, um, about habits, is called Before and After. And so on Friday, I post a reader's story of a before and after success story that they've experienced through habit change and how they changed their habits and what the result was. So that's a really interesting way to focus on habits as well as happiness. And then on Saturday, I post a quotation, or Sunday, I post a quotation. As I said, I love quotations. Um, so people can sign up and get those quotations every single day, but for the people who don't get them every single day, they still get one once a week if they're reading my blog. Because um, I just, I love quoting from my favorite sources. Um, so that's that's how I approach the week. Um, and, you know, from time to time, I'll break it up because, you know, I make the rules. It's great. I can do whatever I want. I can just take a week off. Like, I took a week off for go on a vacation. Um, and I think for some people, that's really hard. Uh, in writing my habits book, I got a lot more insight into why something like that is not particularly hard for my kind of person. My temperament does not find that particularly hard to do. Um, and now I understand why it's harder for other people to stick with something like that, um, why it's challenging, and how they might work with themselves to figure out how to make it easier, if that's what they want to do. You know, there's more to that interview? Yeah, more. And you can find all of it at PurposeRockstar.com. The link is right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. So it's really, really awesome that you can go to PurposeRockstar.com. If you're one of those on-the-go Apple people, you can check it out on iTunes. There's the link. And for my non-Apple people, I'm going to make sure there's a link on Stitcher somewhere next to me. So you got iTunes, Stitcher, and PurposeRockstar.com. Tell your friends. Tell your family. We're on Twitter and Facebook. And somehow we'll be on LinkedIn. I don't know. But at least we'll be on Twitter and Facebook. And one final favor pursue your purpose it needs you